Hello everyone. Hi, welcome and thank you so much for being here. We're going to do a collective timeless reading. So whenever this reading finds its way to you is the right time. But keep in mind, it is a general reading. So see what signs, symbols, messages, ideas, and energies resonate for you in your particular situation and hopefully help to bring you a little clarity on whatever you're wondering, concerned and confused about. This could broaden your perspective and show you something with fresh eyes, but in the end, always trust yourself. That divine inner guidance is inside of you. And try to make balanced decisions between logic and intuition so that your decisions are sound and based in love and for the highest and greatest good of everyone. So we're all uplifted in love. We're gonna start the reading with a couple of animal messages but I have three different decks so let's get one from each let's see what God's source Holy Spirit Christ consciousness or higher selves angels and energies of love have for the highest and greatest good of all first message is from messages from your animal spirit guides let's start with three messages to be the foundation of this reading and the energy going on right now please and thank you oh we have the chameleon this is this is when you have to kind of be a flower on the wall um i just thought of the wallflowers it says stay in the background and adapt to the situation rather than being conspicuous and attempting to direct the course of events so this is you actually taking a little bit of a not a necessarily a back seat but bringing the intention and the power back into your own sphere of influence not trying to orchestrate anything to happen or push anything to happen it's best in a certain situation maybe a partnership a friendship a relationship or even an environment to just kind of observe Kind of get a better idea of what's going on so you know how to navigate your own energy best so the chameleon <laughs> i just heard did i just hear boy george is that boy george come on come on come on come on chameleon <laughs> i can't believe that song just came through right now I feel like I don't know what that video is, but if I watched it, it probably it's probably pretty good. All right, so let's get this is what this is the secret language of the animals. I can hear that song so loud. Oh, it's like it's like it's like the theme here. This reading. All right, let's get an, another animal message. Please and thank you. That just made me giggle. And then we have a black cockatoo. Those are funny little birds. They're the ones with the crowns and they do this like dance thing. Cockatoos are funny. I this is this is kind of an exotic cockatoo. Usually they're like this color. Maybe you have a parrot. Maybe you're really like letting your feathers shine in something. Stand, I mean, I think of them how they're kind of bold. Um, there was a, there, I don't even know if it was a cockatoo. There was a video I saw one time and the, the, the man was trying to tell the bird that it had to go, it's time you have to go to the vet. And it like hit underneath the table and it was like, no, no, <laughs> the crazy, I, if I can find that, I'll put it below. It, was, it made me laugh. It's herald, confidence, companionship and communication. So maybe you're connecting to a really good friend. Um, your communication could always be good or maybe it's someone that um, you haven't like spoken to in a long time. I'm getting that this is a really good friend. Somebody kind of always got your back, like changes your energy. Um, brightens up your day maybe you need to call up that friend if you haven't spoken in a while or you're gonna get a call from someone um, I see somebody like saying 
come on, come on. I know you're working. Time to get off the couch. Time to go out. We're going to go have coffee and pizza. Or that could be you. Like it could go either way. But I see like somebody kind of like investing some time doing something. It's not that it's not important. It probably is. But maybe it's about taking a little break. Um, going out with a friend. Um, yeah, I see like somebody's like, come on, come on. Just get off the couch and meet me here. <laughs> so um, maybe just switching something up today or soon. Or maybe you're sitting on the couch and you're like, I should really call that person. See how they're doing. Maybe you end up going out. All right, this is the other animal whispers. Let's get one more clarity on the black cockatoo, the chameleon, and uno mas, the zebra. I love this card. It's like a pink zebra, man. <laughs> it's like not a normal zebra. It's a very special zebra. So you blend in, but you don't blend in. I always feel like this is like somebody starting a trend, you know, like there's a group and everyone's kind of the same, but then you do something a little different just to stand out. Um, expressing yourself different. What does it say? It does say become one with the herd. And it's, this kind of says the same thing. Stay in the background and adapt to the situation. Maybe something stands out to you with this blending in energy. I don't feel like you really blend in though. I'm going to, I'm going to be honest, not with these two together. I'm going to get that either your energy just stands out different, that you have different um, skills. Maybe you look like everyone else or you're in an environment where, you know, Maybe that's a work environment or a friendship, but I still get that you probably have something really special under the surface. Maybe you haven't expressed that to a certain group yet. Maybe you're waiting, you know, for the right time or the right friend to come out of a situation to, um, like, reveal certain facets about yourself. Become one with the herd. Maybe you always go against the grain, but maybe you're going to find the right pack. Or the right, um, the right herd, where you're heard, where you're seen, where you feel like even if you, you're the pink zebra and amongst, you know, the normal black and white zebras, that your energy just kind of matches. So you could be joining a new group, or this could be a new friend group, or a new work environment, or place where you're at. Um... I hear grooving. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe you're grooving. Maybe it has to do with music. Um, all right, let's go and do a couple of tarot cards. Which one do I want to use, though? I kind of want to use the Surrealist. Let's do one Surrealist, and then I'll go to the Pruitt's Third Eye, and then maybe bounce around back to... Um, Back to some oracle cards. Let's just go with the flow. See what needs to come through. Let's get one card from the Surrealist because these are very complicated, and vibrant, and deep. So let's just get the overall foundation tarot card for this reading. Clarity on the zebra, chameleon, and the black cockatoo having com confidence, communication, herald. It makes me think of like herald, like heralding in a call, hearing a call. Maybe, maybe actually the name Harold or Harry. Um, Harriet, Henry. I actually heard Hugo. Uh, maybe, maybe those names are important. One card, please, and thank you. What is this one? I, I've seen this one before. This is the weirdest card. I mean, it looks like, I don't know what this guy is in. It's like a pipe, but it kind of looks like he's sitting in, <laughs> it kind of looks like he's sitting in some kind of like egg uh, floating bathtub thing. There's a chessboard behind him. So this is 
maybe this is why i mean it you it is telling you here interesting it is telling you in these cards to observe a situation and the page of swords is usually the one that sits back and gathers some information when they're upside down they rush into something without the information they speak before they know the truth um they listen to hearsay you know they latch on to all the gossip and think it's all the truth when they're not getting it from the horse's mouth but when the page of swords is upright here it's not a younger energy it could be someone who's like inexperienced in a certain relationship or area or place you know if you're new at a job it just doesn't mean you're inexperienced or unprofessional or you don't have you know the right education or know-how but it's just you're new to a certain environment so there's still so maybe you're new to an environment or a relationship and it's just not judging a book by its cover getting more information first so you can get you know inside the inside story or unpeel those layers you know so this is like someone who's probably thinking it looks like a bicycle wheel that's actually actually like a um like a helicopter that's actually helping something to move along so maybe you're you know you're playing the long game on something you're paying attention to somebody's next move or your next move before you rush in make sure that it's this the you know the i'm getting the rules to the game and you're not playing like um per cheesy when somebody else is playing pinochle make sure you get on the right page with someone else have a good conversation this could also be like besides just observing some someone somebody could be watching you um but it could also be like a weird message i think the page of swords is usually that like really direct blunt message that comes out of nowhere um but you know like the text and it's just kind of simple and blunt and you're like huh huh <laughs> like what like what did that mean so it could be a very direct message that's very clear answer or it could be kind of like when you get a message and it was maybe an auto correct kind of thing and you don't know what it means you're like what was that it's like what kind of language was that like it didn't even make any sense so if that's the kind of text or communication that came through it's definitely getting clarity and asking the right questions because the page of swords is actually very intelligent they're very sharp in their mind they do know how to ask the right questions usually they're very 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 did i say very <laughs> curious they're sometimes very nosy you know and sometimes upside down it's kind of a little know-it-all without really knowing what they're talking about. So let's clarify these with, let's clarify with a different tarot deck. These are a little more simple. This is the Pruitt's third eye. I'm gonna have that page of swords. It's also an air sign. So um, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. I do, what did it say to sit back? Here it's like you're in with the herd it's the same person here this is like you in a situation in the game i just heard in the running for something maybe you're up for um, a job or a part or something like that you're actually in the running um but then this is sort of the observer here you know that wallflower energy seeing the bigger picture without being trapped and just seeing the trees you see the whole forest so let's get clarity on the chame chameleon, the zebra, and the black cockatoo with this tarot. What do we need to know about heralding confidence, companionship, and good communication? That's number 40, 45. Maybe 45 is an important number. Or 4, 5, 5, 4. Oh, wow. 
that's two um, messages of confidence. So you're, this is either somebody you know that's really, really confident, or this is you and someone else really confident in a partnership or a relationship or this special companionship. But this is probably, I mean, look at these two together. This is probably somebody that you either has some passion for. It could be that kind of partnership. Somebody that really gets your fire moving. But it could also be that you have some expansive energy with this person. Um, it's like adventures in your mind, actual adventures, getting really creative. I mean, definitely expressive but the knight of wands here it's a feminine is definitely confidence look at the there's like a fire on the heart it's like that emoji she looks pretty determined to come towards something so usually a knight is an experience or a messenger like somebody actually coming in to i'm getting that would be the person to get somebody off the couch um, has really good ideas upside down even when they're upside down they try to come across as being confident but it's uh it's like an empty confidence it's from something that they're lacking so it's almost like they overcompensate that confidence to make up for what they don't have going on in their feelings like or how they feel about themselves um, it's also upside down a little bit of a player energy it's that in and out it's the person that starts the project or gets into something or makes all the plans and then doesn't show up or send a text as to why they didn't show up somebody who's kind of in and that and out like all in and then they're gone where they go <laughs> what happened so upright if this person like learns to follow through and keep that flame in their soul like going they have so much potential like they don't just finish a project the project like sparkles and shines and creates opportunities it's like what they put their hands into becomes sunshine so either that's who they are because they have that energy inside of them where it's almost like they're just noticed there's usually a attractiveness in the knight of wands also aries leo and sagittarius doesn't have to be just a fiery energy they're attractive it's their energy it's the way that they present themselves it's the way they look um they're just sort of like oh they're like a hottie <laughs> you kind of want to be around them they're attractive but it doesn't have to be an outside thing if they're upright it's inner and outer beauty and confidence and they just usually got it going on somehow but they could be very reserved too but even if this person is very reserved, they're still noticed. Even if they try to be that fly on the wall, they're just, they just, they're the pink zebra, <laughs> but they stand out. So this could be, um, you boosting somebody else's confidence, getting somebody like, I don't know, to make some plans. I see sort of like plans and adventure getting on board with something. Um, maybe if it's with communication, if this is somebody who is upside down and they're kind of in and out, you know, there and gone, but you never get clarity as to why. I feel like, you know, this person's confident enough to stand independently on their own but it's always nice to have communication if somebody's not going to follow through. So maybe that's a good conversation that can be had. Hey, cool. If you can't make it cool, if you have like eight other billion things that you want to do and you're putting your time and attention into, but my time is valuable and I don't want to sit here and worry land. So just let me know you're not going to show up or let me know you're going to be two hours late or whatever it is. I'm cool. I'll figure out what I have to do with my energy, but don't just, you know, be a no show. Or if that person's always kind of like that and they're a no-show and maybe it's actually um, cutting somebody off or, you know, being around that kind of person less or just have an awareness of it and do what you need to do, whatever 
you know, choice you make to handle a situation like that. But usually, that's a pretty good person to be around. That Knight of Wands is pretty sexy. All right, let's get clarity on staying in the background, adapting to a situation rather than being conspicuous or attempting to direct the course of events. Allowing, we have to let something be. Something has to take its due, due course, a natural, um, it has to grow in natural timing or develop naturally. So you just have to sort of adapt within that development. You might need to be flexible and change as energy or situations or people change. We need to know. I think there's three. The three of pentacles. Yeah, you're working. Wow. The two of, wow. All right, you have the, the two, the three of pentacles and the knight of pentacles. So now we have two knights. So this is telling you something is, you're observing something, but it's developing slowly. This night's awesome because this isn't the night that jumps into something and like fizzles, fizzles away. This is the night that sticks around. So it is possible that these two together work really well together because if this one has the fire and all the ideas and this one has the follow through, but they can balance this one, they can balance each other really nice. This night reaches the goal in the end. They're just really freaking slow. So upside down, well, upright even, they're so slow that sometimes you actually don't think they're, they're doing anything. Sometimes you feel like, what did you do? Like, but they're usually working. They just know when to take a break when the energy is, you know, when to water the garden, when to um, put the horse in the stall, when to go to the store and to gather something in, when do they, they're all over the place, but it's the long plan. You do have this here. They're hard workers. They really want to put their energy and their effort and their time into something that's meaningful and they don't mind getting their hands dirty. Um, they'll go out there and dig their hands in the dirt and do some hard physical labor and, or, you know, if it's planning or it can be business, it doesn't have to be like, you know, actual labor, but it's still hard work. Even if it's all in the computer, um, here, this person is actually doing a Rub Rubik's cube and there's like a graph around this huge opportunity. So it could be business, but this is somebody who's going to stick around upside down. This person is a little too materialistic. They work for selfish gain. They put a lot of energy into themselves, but when it comes to maybe helping others, they're not really on board. They're considering, you know, their own schedule. Knight of Pentacles. But then you have these two. You have a lot of pentacles here. This could be business or somebody you work really well with, somebody you know from work. But the two and the three are awesome. That's a progression. That means you've you've had some kind of opportunity. There could have been a start, slow and steady, day by day. You'll get better at something. You'll get to know and observe that situation or that partnership because it does have to do with your everyday world. So a partnership, or even if this is, you know, a passionate love or a friendship is in your sphere of reality. That is something you can touch and hold. So this could be building anything that has to do with your home, your family, your pets, your job, your car, your things, anything like that. But you have to bring something back into balance. She looks so confident. She actually doesn't look like she's juggling, but she does look like she's having fun. It's adjusting your actual schedule, knowing where and what needs your time the most, where you're going to find the most growth. And if something in particular needs a lot of your time, but you put something on the back burner, don't forget about it. Always come back to something and there's like constant readjustment, but it could also be, that's a two. So sometimes that's a decision where to put your energy, where's the best way. Do you put it in, you know, over here? What is she doing? 
you put it in the thing that feels heavy or the thing that's always light. She's actually a ballet dancer. I mean, you could put it in this thing that feels light, but sometimes the hard opportunity is the thing that brings you that biggest strength. You know, if you always stick to the three pound weights every day and it's the same thing, eventually it's just going to, you know, you have to do more and more and more and more reps. That's kind of what I see. But if you actually take a little more weight, you gain some extra strength, even though it might take a little more effort. And here it's working together. Usually it's on a project or at work. It's recognizing whose skill is the best and what each person brings as far as value to the table. You know, strengths can be different. Talents can be different. Education can be different. Personalities can be different. Um, energies can be different. It doesn't matter. Somehow, when you see how something can work together, so maybe that's why you have to observe. See, you know, where everyone's at. Kind of get, maybe you're coordinating something. You know, if you can see, like, how different skills can come together. I'm actually getting, like, what is, like, the cheer, like, the head cheerleader or some, something like that. Like, they recognize, hey, you're good at the flips. You're strong. You're strong. You're going to go over there and you can do that. And you're kind of good at the dancey stuff over there. That's a parable. In an office position, it'd be you're good with the numbers. You're good with the personality. You're good on the computer and doing all the graphic stuff. How can we make this work together? If it's in a partnership, it's like you're always getting those passionate plans and getting me off the couch. But I'm the one that makes, you know, you have the ideas, but somebody else actually packs the suitcase, make, gets in the car, gets, you know, I'm getting like preparing the meal, has everything ready in the cooler, knows where they're going to take the pit stop on that road trip and gets you there with the proper directions. Like there is a way for even in a partnership, different people to bring something cool to the table. Um, upside down, it's not working well with others. Refusing to see, you know, putting somebody in, in a position where they're not an attribute, where they're not actually, you know, where, where their skills aren't being used. It's not recognizing how each person is valuable or wanting to be the only one that shines and not somehow being a team player. I hope whatever I said there made sense. Um, let's get a clarity card on the zebra, which does said become, become one with the herd. There was a lot of like friendship and teamwork and the possibility of this, you know, potential prosperity or wealth or pro like project or something like really working well. What do you need to know about the zebra, please? Two. The two of wands and the fool. So you have two twos, two knights, the three and the fool. So you're sitting back so you can make some plans. You're seeing the bigger picture on something. You're using this, you know, infinity here. So something keeps coming back around. So something continues. Seeing how something can, um, I hear it be wonderful every day. But with the two of wands, I do think this is, this could be either a passionate partnership or a really good um, business partnership that you can see working together with someone because I always feel like there's someone else observing or someone else that's ready to come into this picture because there's these two wands. It could also be that you're balancing your masculine and your feminine together to push something forward, but this is where you have the plans on the table. You can foresee how something can happen. You see the bigger picture because now you've sat back and observed something, but the next one is the three. So you actually have to get out of this comfort zone here where you're finally been observing something and get a little bit uncomfortable and leave this castle or this hill or this kingdom and put those plans into place. Otherwise, 
you know, you're just up here observing something from afar and you're never really getting into this game. You know, using your strategies, taking this towards a victorious energy. But this is rod, so it's passion, it's creativity, it's adventure, it's excitement, it's energy, it's fire. Here is when you never leave the table. You know, you get too wrapped up in the plans being a specific way and you don't have any desire to work with others or any expansion on how big that map could actually be or where to get started and getting jumbled with your energy and frustrated and leaving the table before it's even, you know, before it's halfway through and or rushing before you really know. But these are really good plans. But it does mean that you have to eventually take a leap of faith with something and maybe leave that comfort space and go to new territories, take a new journey, start a new relationship, start a new idea, start this new partnership. Because the fool's wonderful. It's finally understanding that you might not know what you don't know what you don't know and be willing to learn and discover new territory, discover a new if this is a new partnership or relationship, get deeper into it. Don't assume that you know what someone or something's going to be like before you go on that adventure and you actually, you know, ask questions, um, have experiences. Because when the fool has those experiences and thinks about new things, like what is that over there? And, oh, I want to try that. And is that a, is that, I just saw a slip and slide and I have no idea why. What is that thing? Like, do, do I stand on it? Do I slide down it? Does it need water? You know, like it's figuring it out. So upside down, it's not taking a leap of faith. It's not wanting to take a risk when it looks like the risk here is going to be something that can be built upon. It's, you know, when the fool's upside down, they're a little bit too much of a fool. That's without discernment. You know, if you see something is very obviously not going to work or it hasn't worked in the past or something doesn't feel right, you know, the fool, if they're going in a new territory and it's like, mm, we hear weird noises in that woods and it's kind of dark over there and they don't have a flashlight. And I think maybe wait till the morning. There's always a way to readjust and use your, um, I'm actually getting your street smarts on something. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to have all the knowledge. You can feel it. You can feel when the energy is right and when it's not. But trust yourself. There is something you should take a leap of faith on. Maybe you have to be new. That's okay. We can have many new things that we, you know, many new journeys in our life. That's how we discover more facets on who we are. So let's go to, um, let's sum this up with a, well, let's see. Let's sum this up with a, so we have a lot, like a lot of pentacle and creativity energy and just that one thinker with the page so let's get one creativity card let's just see what message comes through and then let's sum it up with well we have i'm staring at that big bird so let's do the winged enchantment what is a overall message for the collective on the energy going on right now interesting because these two actually came out together so i'm getting two different things with this whatever territory this is a new environment a new relationship a new idea um new business or something like that either you kind of maybe by sitting back and kind of observing something already got a good perspective of that map because usually the fool has no map it's just a free-for-all it's all about discovery so either you actually got a little peek into something like somebody kind of gave you the instructions whether it's that like a person or the whatever you kind of got the manual first so it's actually a different kind of leap of faith um 
you actually got like a little bit of a, of the scoop or the insight or the territory or, you know, the cliff notes to something before you actually jump in. So I'm not getting that it's like that kind of leap of faith and or you really having faith in yourself and taking this leap. It's like you're the person that looks around and looks at something and right away knows how to map that territory. So even if it's a really new territory or relationship or whatever this is, this is different for all of you. It's like you can almost instantly kind of see the bigger picture on something and like be able to map something out. So you can start to um, like make moves on those plans. All right, one card, a little clarity on this whole reading. Zebra Chameleon, Black Cockatoo. Fool, that's the big one. All of the others are just court cards and minor arcana. They're just like personality traits and facets of us and advice on, you know, how to handle something and just little everyday scenarios that you actually have a lot of control over in how you maneuver in them. The big one's the fool, which means it's a brand new chapter coming through. It's a new start. It's like the same color as the zebra. All right, so what else does the collective need to know right now to be helpful? One message, please. Contest. Be yourself fully, because you are without compare, a true winner of the only contest that matters. So don't compare yourself to others, even if you're in this herd here. And it looks like, you know, you have to be like everyone else or you have to work together or whatever. You're st I'm still getting you're that pink zebra. You're still different. There's still something different about you. You can like see the bigger, you like the conductor somehow. Um, maybe this could be also that it could be like a little bit of a five of rods thing. Maybe you, if it's like this, it's like a little bit of competition kind of energy, or maybe you actually were in competition and you're actually winning something, but maybe it's not about winning or getting that thing. Maybe it's actually just having your own goals and being proud of how far you came like your own, you know, your own little personal victory in something not to compare it to anyone else. No one can be you. So let's get one more from this and then we'll go to the bird. Preparation. Luck comes most often to the person and the place where preparation opportunity, opportunity, where is that? Where is that? I don't know where it went. The fool. Here, opportunity and skill meet. Let's see what this game. 12. So maybe that's why it's telling you to hold back, prepare, map something out, get something ready, see where your next move is, how you're going to maneuver in a situation, and then have up utmost trust that when you take this leap you're going to be able to figure it out as you go if there's something you didn't prepare and you forgot your toothbrush you're going to figure out how to make a new one how to buy a new one how to i see the what it was in like survival and you like put the <laughs> you put like the leaf on your teeth you're going to figure it out um let's get one more from the winged enchantment Especially with the knight, you have the knight and the, the knight of pentacles. You're, you're going to be determined to make it happen. You're going to put yourself in there. It's a lot of hard work you're willing to do. And you got this expansive energy of this knight where you're willing to take an adventure that you don't know everything about to get to have a new experience. And with that page, you know, you definitely have the intelligence to figure something out. It's just recognizing when you need to push forward and when you need to take a step back and observe 
learn more about the person or the territory. One more, please and thank you. A lark, number 19. That's such a happy card. It reminds me of the sun. All right, so let's see what this is. Lark is, I am Lark, the endearing song, hey, of the soul. I mean, this is, I always see the fool as like, kind of like the, the soul. It's like the baby, but it's that like your soul calling you to get on a new path of destiny, to try something new, to have some new discoveries. I am voice. I am the wandering bard. I am everything that resonates through sound. I will teach you to use your words and make them magic. I will give you purpose for everything you utter. I will give you, well, you have this communication confidence. Everything, uh, and I will give you a clear intent for every expression you release. Everything you say permeates the cosmos. I am the chant that awakens the mantra that focuses thought. I am the love ballad and the victory song. I am here to free your voice and show you how to direct it to your destiny. Maybe you need to speak. Maybe your throat chakra was a bit blocked. You know, you've been observing something trust yourself when that conversation is supposed to come through the words will flow i am here to free your voice and show you how to direct it towards your destiny you have been quiet too long it's time to awaken your senses speak with clarity and intent express with depth and purpose and pay close attention to your words and how they re reverberate around you you are in tune with the cosmos. You are manifestation. You are harmony. You are Lark. I definitely feel like this is in harmony. But first you have to feel harmonic and like harmony within yourself. You know, whether you feel like you've always blend in or you stand out. Be yourself. You are without compare and a true winner of the only contest that matters. All right, and with that, I bid you adieu. I hope something came through this reading that was helpful for you guys. I love you so much, and I'll see you soon.